We now go to the phones and joining us, GOP political strategist Matt McCoviak. Matt, good morning. How are you? Doing great, Chad. Good morning. How are you? Doing great. Appreciate it. Uh, before we get into the Trump Omarosa thing, which everyone has to talk about today, uh, I want to ask <laughs> you about Brett Kavanaugh. Uh, I, I thought this was uh, supposed to be like a big story and that Democrats were, you know, going to be bringing up how awful and terrible he is, you know, from now until the midterms. And he, he's kind of gone away as a as a topic. Right. I mean, the news media is not talking about him. It's right. I mean, it has been uh, really quiet for a Supreme Court nomination, given the state and the significance of moving from a moderate like Kennedy to a conservative like Kavanaugh, you know, you would expect that this would have been uh, really an incredible battle. Uh, I certainly predicted that. Um, I think the thing you're finding that we've, we've been seeing over the last, you know, six weeks or so is that sort of the opponents of Kavanaugh just haven't been able to get traction on anything. Yeah. You know, they've gone after his wife. They've tried to tie him to controversial decisions in the Bush years. Um but there's so, there's just so much uh, positive. There's there's so many positive stories as part of his record, whether it was being a judge, whether it being, was being associate counsel in the Bush White House, whether it was being staff secretary. Um, you've seen really bipartisan support for him, uh, and so it just looks like this thing is is pretty pretty preordained in in the sense that he's clearly going to be confirmed unless he just has a real meltdown at his Senate Judiciary. The nomination hearing, confirmation hearing, which which begin, uh, I guess, the day after Labor Day, September fourth. Um, as long as he doesn't have, you know, some some just massive uh, uh, problem, um, he's going to get confirmed with somewhere probably between fifty three and fifty seven votes. And so you're right; it is striking how I, I thought this this whole fight was going to consume the entire summer, and it really has been um, a non non event. Yeah, and I think the last time I had Senator Corden on the show, he had mentioned that that he anticipates this will be wrapped up fairly quickly in September. Uh, what are you hearing anything as far as timeline goes? Uh, you know, besides when the hearings start, like how, how long will this process take? You think? I imagine the hearings will take uh, several days that week, where they'll wrap up that week. Probably if they start Tuesday, they'll probably wrap up Thursday. I would think three days. Um, and you, you could have a you know, committee vote would probably be the following week, unless the Democrats, uh, I think they could delay it one week from there. So it could, it could be the third week of September that the committee votes on it, and it wouldn't surprise me if the Senate takes up his nomination the last week of September to get him confirmed and sworn in before the first Monday in October when the fall term of the Supreme Court begins. Very so nice. it is a little bit of a tight timetable, but obviously you don't want to have a 4-4 court. Um, uh, given given the, the likelihood that the court is likely to take up lots of lots of serious issues over the next uh, next fall term. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. Well, I, let, let's go ahead and talk about Trump and Omarosa. It, it is the the topic of the weekend. Uh, apparently, yeah. she recorded conversations inside the White House, and I don't know if every single conversation that she recorded uh, will turn out to be illegal, but at least a couple of them seem to have been uh, illegally recorded. Correct. Well, one of the things that's going to be interesting to learn over the next, uh, you know, few days or few weeks is, you know, is it just sort of procedure that you can't take uh, a listening device, a cell phone, into the Situation Room, or is it, or is it the law? And I don't know the answer to that. Um, I've been in the Situation Room. I, when I was the press secretary in the U.S. Senate, they brought a number of the press secretaries over there to get a briefing on the Iraq War in, I want to say, 2007. So I've been in there. It's a series of rooms. They collect your, your cell phone when you walk in. They keep it in a kiosk. They give it to you when you come back. And it's not just because they don't want people recording things. They also don't want people taking photos. And if your phone's been compromised, they do not want a foreign intelligence service to be able to access anything that's said uh, in that room. So, uh, you know, you could almost not think of something more inappropriate as a government official than to tape a conversation inside that room and to take a cell phone into that room. Um, you know, obviously... Um, you know, to me, I, the circumstances that surrounded her firing are, are kind of irrelevant. <laughs> she clearly is someone who never should have been in the White House in the first place, and, right. and unfortunately, the Trump team burned that, you know, a year too late. Uh, I think a lot of us probably could have looked at her, her record and, and said this is someone who does not need to be in the White House. Um, but, you know, uh, going forward, the question is going to be, do, you know, do any of her claims, number one, have, have evidence associated with them, and then number two, 
do they, you know, do they get traction at all? Uh, and I just don't know. I mean, she has such so little credibility to begin with um, that it's hard to know whether her, her attacks on, on the president are ultimately going to land and move anyone who doesn't already dislike him. Yeah, it almost seems as though the media will enjoy this in the way that they enjoy any clip that comes from TMZ uh, about any celebrity. But at the end of the day, I mean, if you're CNN or Fox News or or anyone else, you're going to look a little ridiculous. Not that they don't, you know, they may not even care about that at this point. But you're going to look even more ridiculous than you have been if you try to put Omarosa as you know, the expert on Donald Trump or as someone that you can go to as a source, she's just, she's crazy. And it would make the media look even more ridiculous, would it not? Yeah, I mean, this is this is one of the interesting things about Trump derangement syndrome is that, you know, people that, you know, it doesn't matter who it is, as long as they attack Trump, they like that person, right? And, you know, liberals had no, no use for someone like Bill Crystal over the years who was pretty hawkish on foreign policy issues. But once he started attacking Trump, he's become their favorite conservative. You can go down the list. Jen Rubin uh, from the Washington Post is another example. Rick Wilson, uh, the Republican consultant, is another example. And I think in some ways, Omarosa's utility to Democrats is going to be very short-lived. The half-life life will be three or four or five days. wouldn't surprise me if ultimately uh, no one mentions her name after the end of this week, that she will ultimately have served the purpose the Democrats wanted her to serve. Uh, but obviously, she's not so far, we haven't seen anything she said really make a huge difference, change things considerably. Um, so we'll have to see where it goes. Obviously, these kind of, things, these kind of stories are not helpful. They um, create pressure and stress in the White House for the staff. That, that you know, it's already a pretty stressful environment. Um, so it's it's not an ideal situation. But again, if it was coming from someone with a cabinet secretary or a really senior, well respected. White House official, that would be one thing. But coming from someone like this who was a celebrity television, uh, you know, performer and someone who seems to be sort of famous for being famous, I just don't think it means all that much. Yeah. Matt, before we let you go, um, any statewide news that uh, people need to be taking a look at? Well, um, obviously the U.S. Senate race between Cruz and Aurora continues to, to get you know, a lot of attention. There was an email this morning that Aurora sent to a, uh, supporters of his that uh, makes it sound like he's going to go on television for the first time this week. Um, so, so that's interesting. I think another thing, uh, Chad, is, is obviously that Senator Cruz has to go to D.C. Uh, I believe tomorrow for the rest of the month. Now, I think he'll probably be back over the weekend. But the Senate is in session for the rest of this month. So that's not something that burdens their work. If the House is out of session for the month of August. So yeah. he'll be campaigning, and Cruz will be in D.C. voting on appropriations bills and judges and other things. And so that, that, that again, gives their work a little bit of a strategic advantage over the next 30 days. Ultimately, they both will be home, uh, you know, a good amount of time in September when the Congress is not in session, but then all of October as well. Yeah. Uh, Matt, tell folks uh, where they can sign up for your morning email and also what your uh, latest podcast is about. Yeah, we do a morning email for Texas. We take all the news around the state, put it in one email, to look at your inbox, 3,000 Texans get it. It's called Must Read Texas. You can Sign up for a free one-week trial uh, at mustreetexas.com. The podcast is called Mac on Politics. Uh, uh, it's available on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher. Uh, last two episodes, we had the former Inspector General, Inspector General for Iraqi Reconstruction, Stuart Bowen. We talked a lot about the Middle East. Very, very interesting conversation. And this morning, we posted a really in-depth conversation on trade with Tony Frato, who's a CNBC contributor. Um, and so you can find both those conversations and all of the episodes at, uh, at wherever you find podcasts for the podcast called Mac on Politics. Very nice. Uh, Matt, as always, appreciate your time. We'll visit with you next week. Thanks, Chad. Take care. See you. That's Matt McCovey.